Hello, welcome, I'm Hannah, and today I'll be showing you my entire collection of eyeshadow palettes. I haven't done this video in a really long time because my eyeshadow palette collection is kind of out of control. I'll talk about this more at the end, but I haven't decluttered it in so long, and the collection just doesn't feel like it represents who I am anymore, and it hasn't felt like that for a long time. But I do plan to make more content with my eyeshadow palette, so I thought it would be fun to do this now, so then hopefully after a big declutter, we'll be able to compare from where we started, which is here today. So keep that in mind when I'm showing you some of these, that I would definitely not be purchasing them today, but I have them, so we'll take a look. And it's always fun to be reminded of some weird old stuff that you probably forgot about, but I just happen to still have. So without further ado, let's switch over to my hands and get into it. Okay, I knew I was filming this video, and yet when it came time to pull out all these palettes, I was like, wait, <laughs> I have to like deconstruct all my storage and take all these palettes out. I haven't considered these all in one place in so long. I've had some put to the side that I know I will declutter when it comes time. I have some kind of like tucked into deep crevices for a while that I didn't realize would be a while. So this is kind of interesting for me. I'm going to try to sort these out by brand a little bit. So it's going to be easier to go through and show you. And actually I'm realizing I still have more to pull out. Okay, I hope this is it. What a weird experience to sort my palettes and realize most brands I only have like one, maybe two of. I've seen very clearly how much I have that I don't use or enjoy. And I found which brand I have the most palettes of. Make your guess right now. Which brand do you think I have the most palettes of? Okay, the answer, which I would not have guessed, BH Cosmetics. Isn't that funny? You know, I haven't been a big palette purchaser in many years, but it makes sense that the palettes I've purchased the most are the palettes that feel like the lowest stake. Maybe a big palette person isn't running out and buying $60 palettes just because they can, but from time to time, clearly, I've run out and purchased $10 palettes because I can. So let's start, let's start with BH Cosmetics. The first one is this Opal for October palette. This came out last year. Every month in 2022, they were coming out with a birthstone palette for each month. And I remember Angelica was posting videos for all of them, and it just kind of felt exciting. And then when it got to be October, which is my birthday month, I was excited and I bought it right away. It's a very pastel palette. I have not reached for it, like, more than one or two times after getting it like over a year ago. But I will say I really liked the transition color. I thought the mattes were very nice. It's just the color story that isn't me. And I think that is kind of my impression of BH Cosmetics. I think they make really nice palettes. So it makes sense to me that I've tried them out and I've kept coming back because other than color selection, I don't tend to be disappointed by formula. The next one is this Daisy Marquez palette. She's not an influencer that I did follow, that I have followed, but when this came out, it was vegan. All the palettes that I buy for the past, I don't know, eight or nine years or so have all been vegan. And I liked the color story. And Nowadays, it's not really my jam. It's not what I look for, but I, I see why I did that. I like the organization of the mattes and the shimmers. I do enjoy warm tone mattes and cool tone shimmers, but I like that there's some variety in there too. There's this mint that's kind of out of place a little bit. There's a light shimmer that I'm sure I was using for my inner corner before I was really into indie iridescence. But I never liked this design where the top completely comes off. It's supposed to be able to like, you know, become like a little vanity like that. I'm not doing that. It just felt dinky to me. So I feel like I never got that much use out of it because it just didn't feel exciting once I had it. But I see, I see where the thought process was in buying it. And I do think the shadows are nice. Next is this blueberry muffin palette. And this 
I really like this palette. This I still reach in for from time to time. I know if I'm looking for a blue, especially for my lower lash line, love a good blue on my lower lash line. This is where I could come and find one. I also love that it has a warm tone transition because even, even if I'm doing a cool tone look, I just feel like I look odd if my crease is cool toned also. It might just be a preference thing or I'm not used to seeing myself like that, but this palette really works for me because of that and it has some really pretty shimmers. Quality is really nice. Really like this one. These two from BH Cosmetics are some of the biggest staples from my collection. I will say I'm considering retiring them to the nostalgia makeup and considering them along with those because they do feel old and I haven't been reaching for them because of that. I think I bought both these maybe in 2017. This one was an absolute favorite of mine. This is the Weekend Festival palette. I feel like when I started my Instagram, which was in the fall of 2017, my makeup Instagram, I was doing so many looks with this. One that's jumping out to me, I remember when... Kim K Beauty, KKW, came out and she had that palette. Or was it the collab palette with Makeup by Mario before he had his own brand? I don't know. I remember there was this pop of blue in this neutral palette and everybody, all the influencers were all doing looks with the pop of blue in the neutral palette. So I remember using this palette to do it. This is such a gorgeous shade of blue. I remember using this brown to kind of make a halo with it. And that's something I really like about this palette, that it was versatile. You can make colorful looks. You can make more neutral looks. And at the time, I was really into color. And I mean, color is what it did the best. I think I'm going on too much about each palette. But this one, I have some really fond feelings about. This one I like because it's the same like size, so it kind of feels like the same collection. This is the Royal Affair palette, and this was also before I was really into neutrals. But I thought of this, and I guess I kind of still think of this as like a perfect neutral palette. I like that it has a variety of options for transition colors. It has a variety of tones for deepening colors. It also has these pops that peach, a couple greens. I love this icy blue for my inner corner. And probably the neutral shimmers are what I use from this the least, but I do appreciate a good variety in those also. I wish more brands came out with neutral palettes like this. Like, I think this is undeniably a neutral palette, but it's not a one-note neutral palette. And you could go into this palette and get so many different looks. And then the final BH Cosmetics palette I have is this Carly Bible one. This is also really old. So they had collabed and come out with an original palette that was just these top three rows. I had it. I had bought it when it came out. And I remember loving to use, I think it was this mauve color in my crease. And then I had an Urban Decay single that was like a light shimmer that I had gotten as the birthday gift from Ulta. And that was like my go-to work look for a while. And then when they came out with this deluxe edition, which included all these highlighters, I wanted this one instead. So I remember selling the original on Mercari and I just kept this one. And I think that was a, a realistic decision, very economical of me. But once I got this palette, for some reason, I never used it as much as I used the original palette. Maybe it is that it's like bigger and bulkier maybe it's just that I had you know I had already kind of gotten sick and moved on of these specific tones but it is kind of a funny collab to look back on because it just feels like so long ago but I mean it's still pretty I think if it came out nowadays I would hope it would have more variety in the tones these are all very mid-toned but I mean even for me I would love like a deep saturated brown like I don't think either of these are saturated enough to really get like any kind of intensity, but I do appreciate it. I appreciated this palette. I liked using the highlighters as like inner corners or like pops of shimmer. And I mean, this was before my indie days. So, so <laughs> these shimmers worked for me. Okay, next, I feel like I might as well just get the next most populated brand out of the way. This is ColourPop. I have four in front of me. I know I also have the Orange You Glad palette that I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I actually did just film an entire video with the Orange You Glad palette that will either 
that either came out right before this or it'll come out soon after. So we'll have plenty of time with that one. So I'm not going to like bother looking too hard. But this is the Aha uh -huh Honey palette. I also, I know I already posted a video with this palette and I feel like I've said everything I could say in it, but I will quickly reiterate. This palette was kind of a learning experience for me. When I got it, I was such a colorful eyeshadow person. It was all I wanted to wear. And this was kind of like a step into neutrals for me. I felt like wearing a yellow look was kind of just like teetering on the edge of both. It was kind of neutral. It was kind of colorful. And I always felt really nice with those looks. I bought it because it was vegan. The monochromatic palettes from ColourPop were all the rage. So I would have bought any vegan ones that they came out with. But I'm happy that I, I had that time with it because it was a fun, it was a fun learning experience. This is the Cancer Quad. They came out with all these little Zodiac palettes a couple years ago, and I still think this is like really pretty to look at, but I never use it. I really love this transition color, and it's been a thought of mine for a while that I could eventually depot this. But also I kind of feel like I want to try the shimmers more because I'm a little bit more willing now to work with a shimmer that's not like the most shimmery shadow in the whole world. And I do like, I like the little component of this. I like how compact it is. So I don't know. This palette, I hate the packaging of, but I do like the shadows inside. It's the Color Vision palette. I, I, I would not have known that. I think it's just a nice little grab and go neutral palette. It has a pop of hot pink. It has a nice shimmer that I could use for my inner corner. I could also use it on my lid. So it is kind of like a little, a little handy palette if I wanted that. This Take Me Home palette I've had for so long. ColourPop used to all the time do gift with purchases. They definitely haven't done that in a long time, but they used to have these deals all the time that spend this and then you get a free ultra satin or spend this and you get a free this or every order comes with a free this. I don't know. But this little six pan, it, it came free one of those times. I wasn't a big neutral girl when it came out, but I did appreciate having this. And I think these were shades that they had separate. It's not, it doesn't say on the back, but I think these were shades that they had separate. So it was kind of fun to like try their single formula also. And nice, nice and compact. Here's a brand that I have three of. This is Menagerie Cosmetics. The palette I've had the longest from these three, I think, is the Flight Club. And I love this. I love these tones of purple. I love their matte formula. It's very pigmented. I found that I don't like it as much for, like, my crease. But I love it for my lower lash line. I love it if I want, like, a matte pop on the lid. These shimmers are also really beautiful. They're not like crazy duo chromes or anything, but when it comes to standard metallic formulas, I've always found that Menagerie has enough like oomph in it, like enough presence to it that I really like it. And this is definitely one of my favorite palettes in my collection. I do have a whole video when I first got this from like 2021, I think. So if you're curious, that does exist. I also have a video from when this one came out. This is the Serenity palette. It was a collab with Annette's Makeup Corner. This is such a pretty palette also. I especially love these three colors up here. And when this came out also, I did like a three or four looks with it, something like that. I do find that I reach for this one less just because it has less of a cohesive color story. And a lot of the times when I reach in for palettes, it's because I'm like, oh, I want a purple for my lower lash line and I know I can open this and decide which purple to use. But this like, you know, it doesn't have like one thing that screams out to me as much, but the quality is right up there with the other Menagerie shades and I really like it. This one, the Killer Purr, this is the most recent one to be added to my collection of my Menagerie ones. I got this one just this past January. It's like the second version. It's an old palette and then I think it was last Black Friday they like revamped it and they changed some of the shades out and when that first happened I didn't really pay much attention but then something just like flipped in my mind and I was like wait, I really want it. <laughs> and I really like it. This I do think to grab because I just think of it as a neutral palette or I think of it as like an earthy toned palette. I'd say this antelope shade in particular is so pretty and I want to smear that all over my eyes. I might do that soon. This shade Mane is so pretty also. I'm disappointed they've switched over to circle pans now. I know that they still have this palette. They still have the Flight Club palette also. And both of those are circle pans. And I just feel like 
I don't know. It just doesn't look as good in the palettes. I hope they go back to squares, especially because they're not doing singles anymore. So why not, like, keep their palettes looking unique? I don't know. I don't think they've been releasing that much this year anyway, outside of, like, liquid shadows and stuff. But I don't know. I've enjoyed their palettes. I just hope they go back to square pans. I really wasn't intending to go in order of quantity, but I, I kind of am, so <laughs> whatever. Next are these three Norvina palettes that I have from Anastasia, from the Norvina collection, and I love these palettes. I know they've gotten some mixed reviews. I know that people have a lot of mixed feelings about Anastasia as a person, as a brand, but I, I don't, I like these palettes. I think they're really good. This one I got in like February of 2020. It's not when it came out, but it's when like I started thinking about it. This is the kind of palette that I can't wait to declutter my collection enough that I can like remember to grab this. There's some shades in here that I know I just don't have anywhere else in my indie collection. Like this like chartreuse greenish neon yellowish color. Absolutely love that. I absolutely love this green this green, and even just having like the contrast of those with like this red, the pink, the teal. I love this palette. It's not like my, it's not my usual color story, but there's so many gorgeous mattes in here that like every time I look at it, I kick myself for not, for not using it more often. Even this shade reminds me kind of that antelope shade from the Menagerie palette, and it's so pretty. And then after that, I think it was, I think it was in 2020, if not 2021, I got this one, which is the, the fourth one. I think this is three and this is four. And this is just such a gorgeous pink palette. I feel the same way about this as I do about the third one. The colors are so beautiful. Some of these colors I definitely don't have elsewhere in my collection. I love this. I love this. I did a look in the video that I posted where I was trying out all of my lipsticks and checking in every day. I think it was the look that I was wearing in the first check-in and the intro that was just like this color and this color. And I'm just so impressed with these palettes for having shadows that like, if indie brands were coming out with those colors, I would buy them, but they don't, so I don't have them other than this palette. And I just feel like that's so, I don't know, it's kind of hard to come by unique shades. And these Norvina palettes have them. This is the Volume 5 palette. This one I got in 2022, and it's such a beautiful purple palette. My first impression is that this is, like, less unique than the other two, but still, like, this pinky, purpley, lilac-y color so gorgeous, and I love this satin color. And then there's like this glitter, so pretty. I love these so much. I have nothing but good things to say about the quality of these palettes and the colors of these palettes. I need to, I need to get my butt into using these. I need to declutter. I love them so much. I accidentally skipped over a brand that I have four of, and that brand is Glamlight. I have four of their palettes, as I said, and two of them I quite like, and two of them I don't really like. And I don't know if it's just a coincidence or what, but the two that I like are the ones that aren't collabs, and the two that I don't like are the ones that are collabs. It could just be chance, it's a pretty small sample size, or it could be they spend more money when they don't have to pay an IP and make better quality eyeshadows. I don't know, I'm not saying anything, I don't know. This palette that I really like is the, it doesn't even say it on it, it's like the red velvet palette. Yeah, that's funny. The back has like nutrition facts and it has the ingredients and everything, but it doesn't say red velvet anywhere. But yeah, I really like this. It's really pretty unique toned mattes. I think of this as being pretty neutral also, but that's just because I like to use pinks as neutrals. Their shimmer formula isn't my favorite shimmer formula, but it is pretty, it is shimmery, and also I'll say their matte formula isn't my favorite matte formula either. It comes up a little bit more watercolory and less pigmented, but I've gotten a lot of looks that I really like with this, and I definitely want to use this more. And then the Chocolate Martini palette, I got this one earlier this year, and I really like this. I can tell from looking at it that I haven't even used all of the shimmers before. A lot of the times that I reach in for this, I just use, like, some of the mattes. I love this as a transition. Sometimes I use this one for deepening up. I've used the Dark Chocolate to darken up a look. Definitely want to use this one more. Really like it. And then we have the Chucky palette. 
I made a couple videos about this earlier this year. I was so intrigued when it came out, as a lot of people were. It's just a really unique looking palette. We don't see these like deep, dark color stories that often. And when I was buying it, I was ignoring the fact that I don't wear <laughs> deep, dark shadows. And every time I put this on, it just did not feel like me in any way. So I get what they're doing and I, I like that it exists. But for me, it was definitely a miscalculation and I never use it. And then this is the Michaela palette. So I bought this I think it was 2021, and I barely knew who Michaela was, but I just liked the palette, and I still see where I was coming from. I like palettes that have a variety of neutrals, but it also has a variety of colors, but I just find the formula, like, hard to blend into each other. Like, I think they, the, the Glam Light shadows, to me, work better for more simple looks. And maybe that's one of the reasons, too, that I prefer the smaller palettes. When I see this, my brain wants to put together combinations. But then when I actually do the combinations, I don't like how it turns out. And then on top of that, not on TikTok makeup at all. My TikTok is entirely cat videos. But just knowing, like, internet drama, my opinion of Michaela has only gotten worse since I bought this. When I bought this, it was, like, totally neutral. And now I'm just like, eh. So, yeah, I don't know. Not my favorite. I have two palettes from Lime Crime. These are pretty old, but, I mean, I didn't buy them when they first came out. I bought them... It was probably like 2018 or 2019. This is the Venus 1 palette. This is the Venus 2 palette. The shimmers look so incredibly dull. I haven't used either of these in so many years. This one, like, I do respect the color story of this. It feels like Subculture from Anastasia. I think this palette predates Subculture from Anastasia. And I love this blue shadow in here, but I never use either of these and you know they're not exciting in the same way that they that they once were in the beauty community okay one other really old thing that we're gonna get out of the way okay we're not gonna we're not gonna judge me for owning this <laughs> it's something I would not purchase today under any circumstances but I purchased it a long time ago and these are two Jeffree Star palettes when I say that my collection does not feel like my collection exhibit a and b I used to have other Jeffree Star palettes as well. I once had the Blood... I can't believe I can't remember it. That's like a... That's kind of a good sign to me. I kind of like that I can't remember what it's called. The palette that was in like in the red trunk, that was one of his first palettes that came out. I don't know. I had that one. I liked it. It went off. And then also I had the palette that was in like the purple velvet trunk and that one was not as good quality and I decluttered that one. And then these are the, just the two that are left over that I didn't declutter before I decided I would wait to declutter until I was ready to do a big declutter. This is the Jawbreaker palette. It has a lot of colors and I see why I liked it at the time. I don't think I had brights like this from other brands. And I will say also, the thing that made me interested in Jeffree Star Cosmetics back in like 2017, 2018, and the same with Lime Crime, is that it was really hard to find eyeshadow that was vegan and colorful. It felt like a lot of the eyeshadow that was vegan just kind of like happened to be vegan because they didn't want to use any intense pigments. And it took a brand to like deliberately make vegan makeup, you know? And that that's what Lime Crime was doing. That's what Jeffree Star was doing. So I don't know. This was exciting when I got it, but now I look at it and I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. And then the Alien palette, this is really old. Also, I like feel the packaging coming apart. I remember being impressed with the shimmers in here. I liked this when I first got it, but yeah, I don't know. Question. There's some videos that I've been like planning on doing for such a long time and I just never did. And one of my oldest video ideas was doing like a, like a ranking and roasting Jeffree Star Cosmetics palettes. I would still be down to do that. And especially like before I declutter these and just kind of like show them there to make fun of them a little bit, make fun of all his other palettes. But I don't know if anyone like wants to hear a video talking about him. Like, are are we pissed off at the name or would we be down to like have a little bit of fun, make fun of it a little bit? 
let me know what you think because I I kind of would like to do that. I think it would be fun, especially because it's just been in my brain for years. But I also don't want people to see the title and think, like, I'm a Jeffree Star apologist, because I'm definitely not. <laughs> and, I mean, if you purchase from Jeffree Star, I don't care what you do, but I haven't purchased from Jeffree Star in many years. I don't have a positive opinion. I just, you know, I just haven't decluttered any palettes in a long-ass time. So, let me know. Okay, next let's talk about Elf. Both of these are also really old. This one was their first collab with Jay Kissa, and it was this little seven pan or six pan in a highlighter. When I got this, I loved this. And I was like, this is the perfect for me colorful palette. You can mix and match the colors in so many different ways, get so many different looks. And this is when I was like big in my colorful era that a travel palette for me would not have meant, you know, a couple, a couple neutral shades. Like this is, this is what I wanted. But I mean, this palette did teach me a valuable lesson because I thought of this as a travel palette, as I said. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, I should save it and use it when I travel. I go on a decent amount of little trips. A couple times a year, I'm out on a little trip, but it was never enough to get a lot of use out of this. And I was kind of over it before it ever got that much use. It taught me that like, if you're excited about makeup, don't keep yourself from using it for any reason. It's not like I was at risk of running out of this. I could have used it so much more while it was exciting for me. Now it's not exciting for me. I think I did bring this on a trip sometime like last year just to like see what was up. Or maybe I considered bringing it on a trip and then I used it once and I was like, no way. <laughs> it's just not up to the standards that I now have for makeup. So it is what it is. This one's the Opposites of Track palette. When this came out, everyone was so excited about it. It is exciting, kind of like what I was saying about that BH Cosmetics palette before. It's an interesting neutral palette. It has some different options for cool tones, warm tones. I guess it is missing neutral tones, but it does cool and warm. It has some rich jewel tones. The ELF formula is definitely not my favorite, but I did use this a little bit when it was like hot and exciting. I have these two palettes from Juvia's Place. The Magic palette was the first one I got from them. I remember when everyone was so excited about Juvia's Place. I remember Nikki Tutorials, who I used to watch at the time, was always talking about it. And lo and behold, I looked at their website once and I found out that pretty much all of their powder shadows were vegan. And I looked through to try to figure out which one I wanted to purchase. I decided on this one. I was so excited about it. And I remember in that era, it was really hard for me to find cool toned shimmers that were vegan and this purple was like so good for me. I loved using it. This light blue, I loved using it, but it's just no longer what I was so excited about. I did a whole video last year where I duped this out with shadows in my collection and my collection beat it like a million times over. So this has just kind of been sticking around as like a little, a little relic of a pastime, but it was good for me then. It's just not good for me now. Ooh, shouldn't be, <laughs> shouldn't be throwing palettes. This one's the Afrique palette. This one, I remember wanting it so bad, mostly for this shade. And this again was when I was in my my long colorful era pretty much most of my makeup history has been my colorful era but I've always like appreciated a good wonderful shimmer you know and to me this was like the wonderful shimmer I did like it I didn't use it as much as I fantasized I would but this palette did come in handy. It was nice having like a little variety of colorful mattes also. I remember once looking at my palettes and I was thinking about my least favorite shade from each of them and I decided it was this one for this and then I ended up doing like a look I loved centered around that shade. So I, you know, I had good times with it. I respect this palette. I like that it has the neutral tones but you can build it up to something colorful but haven't used this one in a long time either. I have two palettes from Kylie Cosmetics. I feel like I'm unpopular in my opinion, but I I like <laughs> Kylie Cosmetics. I find that the formulas are nice. The color stories are kind of like interesting. I love the packaging of this. Like I'm it's not like I'm a huge Kardashian fan or anything, but like I don't know, they're pretty and I feel like the styling of this palette is just so pretty. I did a whole video on this when it came out and I will say of the two I don't use this one as much, but that is a hard comparison because I use this so much. This one is the Mauves palette, and this is like my near everyday transition color. I don't know if you can see the dip in there. I don't think you can. 
But there, there's a dip in there. I pull for this like every day. I'm often deepening it up with maybe one of these or with this one, or I use one of those in the lower lash line. This is like the palette I grab to travel with me, and then I'll make like a little separate nine pan with some indie shimmers. My biggest complaint, I mean, it's not even a complaint about this, but it's a complaint about their other palettes, is that like all the palettes that are this format look exactly the same on the outside. Maybe the, like, metallic of the text is a different shade. That might be it. But I would be tempted to buy the matte one that just came out if it had different packaging. Like, if it was black all over, I would buy it in a second. But I don't want to have to, like, figure out which one's which every time I reach for them. And while I love this as a transition, I would also like to have, like, a perfect go-to transition that's more of a neutral tone. And I think that's, like, in that palette, you know? But... Love this. This is probably my most used palette. And this one, I wish this one had a perfect transition in it, but I do like some of these like purpley tones in there a lot. And I do reach into this from time to time. I have two palettes from Adept Cosmetics. This is Plain Jane. This is the original. I know that they like remastered it or something and they came out with smaller pan sizes but this is from like the first go of it and I really like these shadows. I especially like this one here. They're just like beautiful wet looking and I don't always think to grab into this but when I do I like it. And then this is the Minka palette. I got this one last like December I think. I did an ice watch video on this these are super intense, foily, kind of like sharpish metallics, and I definitely don't reach into this one as much. I have two from Urban Decay. I have the Stone Vibes palette, which I did a video sometime within the last year where I was comparing this to my single shadows. When I bought this, I thought it was such like a perfect all-in-one, but I do feel like over the years, these shimmer shadows haven't held up and they just don't feel like easy to work with. They feel very hard panned. So this is a palette that I really never reach into. This palette I got last fall, the Naked Robin Eisenberg palette. And I know this one was getting like a lot of shit. People were being like, that's not nudes. I don't care about the title naked. It doesn't bother me in the least bit if they want to call things naked that aren't neutrals. I just thought this was like a cool looking palette and I do reach for this as a transition shade a lot. I don't, I don't use this that often, but I do like the other mattes. I've reached into them for time to time. And although the shimmers aren't like the most intense shimmers. I've used them as building blocks or lower lash lines before also, and, and they do work, but this is mostly a, a matte palette <laughs> for me. I have these two Huda Beauty palettes. Huda Beauty, I think I said that weird. I have the Electric Obsessions and the Mauve Obsessions. Obsessions. I've been talking so long I can't talk anymore. These are sold and I haven't used either of these in a really long time. I can't remember when I got the mauve. I feel like I got the mauve in like fall of 2017. And I know I got the electric for Christmas 2017 because when I went to Hawaii in January of 2018, I had it with me. These were exciting at the time. I really like this teal color and I really like this color. I feel like I keep pointing out this color in different palettes, which like if someone had asked me yesterday, I'd be like, I don't have anything that color, but... I'm seeing now I have a lot of things that color. So even though I'm attracted to that in this palette, like, I know I have it now. But yeah, these were cool at the time, but um, I totally forgot I owned them. I have these two glitter palettes from Nabla. I think both of these were in, like, beauty boxes. They might have both been in separate friend mood boxes. And my opinion on these is that I never reach for them, but every time I've, like, randomly selected them along with, like, you know, eyeshadows and I've used them, I've always thought they perform really nicely, but I just never, like, think to add them in unless I'm making myself do it, but I like them. I did purchase a third one at one point. I think it was around Christmas last year, and I returned it. I was like, what am I doing? I never use the two I have. <laughs> I definitely don't need a third, and I'm happy I did that because even the two is kind of too much. I think this is the last one until we get into like random one-off palettes, which actually I don't have as many of as I would have thought. This is kind of like, <laughs> this is kind of barely anything. You're going to see what I mean. So this is the pop-up palette. It's the treasure palette. And 
I decluttered all but two of these so far. It's so, like, I don't know. Like, I want to say it's kind of fun watching other people talk about makeup because I know a lot of people really like this palette and I just didn't have the same experience. It is a very inexpensive palette. I think it retails for like 28 US or something like that. But my experience is just that I find them difficult to work with. They're really chunky. The only exception is this, which is why I'm keeping it. And the reason I'm keeping this one is because it's like a really pretty pink. But the other four were just like chunk city, so loosely packed, fell down on my face, had to like really baby them to get them on my eyes. And I wasn't into it. But I mean, you know, it's possible that you would like it because other people do like it. But yeah, in my opinion, it's just like, it's not even worth that money. And then this palette is so chunky, which is annoying too. And then on the other hand, this is another six pan palette they have. But the problem with this one is that it's too thin. <laughs> this is the, the pop-up palette for the Bizarre Volta and M. Jones 5018 collab, which I bought like a whole six pan of. And I bought it as singles, but then you had an option to add in the palette like with or without magnets. So I added one with magnets. But once the magnets are in, it's too like it takes up too much room in the pan and then you can't put a shadow in and close it. So it really kind of renders this useless unless you're doing like flat lays. But even at that point, why do I have the magnets then if it's just like sitting there for a picture? So that is kind of funny, the contrast of these two palettes. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> not not really much going on in either of these right now. Okay, so next we have this palette. This is from Beauty Bay. It's a collab with Nikki Tutorials and it came out several years ago, but then I got this when I was buying the Norvina 5 in I think March of 2022 and I was like waiting for a good sale on the Beauty Bay website and I ended up finding that good sale. I think it was like 20 or 25 percent off and you got this palette for free. And I had never been interested in this palette. When it came out, I had watched Nikki Tutorial's reveal video and I was like, you know, all right, like I like the packaging, but like inside it just feels so convoluted. Like it almost feels kind of like a neutral and pink color story, but then like the blue feels so out of place, the yellow feels so out of place, the red feels so out of place. I was never interested, but you know, getting it for free, I'm like, all right, cool, I'll try it. And I... I like it mostly for these two shadows. I think those two shadows are incredible. And in fact, I'm wearing this shadow right now, and you'll see it in the intro and outro of this video. These two are like both like amazing indie brand shadows. Other shimmers are in, in here are just like fine. I think the mattes in here are fine, but I would be willing to keep this forever <laughs> to keep those two shadows. I think they're just so good. My hope for Beauty Bay is that at some point they'll come out with like a nine pan maybe of just like this formula shadows. I think that's like what would get me to buy another Beauty Bay palette or buy my first because technically I didn't even buy this. But I do think very highly of this palette because I love using those two shades. From Rowan, I have this 1111 quad. I did a video with this last year. If you watched it, you might remember I'm not the biggest fan of it. I, I like the way that other people talk about Rowan. They talk about it being kind of like a cool girl, messy, smeary, creasy thing going on and it just like feels like you live in your makeup and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> I don't love it. I don't love quads in general. I would so much rather smear a powder shadow on my eyes and be on the go than smear one of these on my eyes and be on the go. From Nabla, I have the Secret Palette. This, I, I think I did a video with this last year also. I think it's fine, but I, I never reached for it. The Kesha Rose Palette. This I did a video with when I first got it in December of 2019. And I did another video with it last year, just kind of like comparing it to my indie shadows and trying it out again. I don't know. I still have mixed feelings about it. I still like this little tassel. I still like the packaging. Some of these, as I'm going through, like I know what I will do with them in the declutter. I'm trying to not make it like too obvious, but I mean, it's probably pretty obvious for some of them that like 
they're going to be going the second I do a declutter. This I think about from time to time and I still don't know because I just feel like it is kind of cool. Like it is like a little relic and I could imagine like if I were to start doing Instagram flat lays, which like I'm not opposed to doing, this would be like a really nice little palette to do it in. And these are magnetic. So it's like I could even declutter the shadows and just keep the palette. But also, if I'm going to keep the palette, I could just keep the shadows and take them out when I need to. Or I could be realistic with myself and say that I never do flat lays. So like, why am I going to all of a sudden start doing it? I don't know. Weigh in down below. I'm easily swayed. <laughs> From Patrick Ta, I have the Major Dimension Volume 1. I purchased this during the Sephora sale in April, and I really do enjoy using the mattes in here. I can see I haven't touched a couple of the shimmers or the creams, but I think the mattes are nice. They're nicely pigmented. My only regret is that they just came out with, like, the full matte one, and I kind of wish I waited for that one. I mean, I didn't know it was coming. I... I bought a palette that was like two or three years old, not knowing that a better one was going to be coming like three months after I got it. But also I could start playing with the shimmers and make myself happy that I have this. I don't know. I could imagine getting like a really nice kind of like chocolatey, smoky eye using these shimmers. Yeah, I like having it just, you know, I only use the matte so far. The Escape Pod Palette. This was on my radar for a long time. I talked in several videos about wanting to try it. I finally bought it earlier this year because it was on Urban Outfitters and it was discounted and I had a gift card and I just haven't like really connected with it. I am kind of working on another video with it. I filmed some parts of it already. So I don't know. Stay tuned for that. I'm trying to figure out if like there's anything I really like to do with it. I also mentioned this in the original video, but so squeaky. I hate that. Packaging, so bulky. I don't know. I don't know about this one. From Sugar Pill, I have the Fun Size Palette. This, I want to use more, but I do like it. And I did a look, I think, yeah, I did a look with 8-Bit not too long ago of like just that on my eyes. I would also like to do a look of just Continue on my eyes because it's such like an interesting like grungy yellowy green or like a grungy chartreuse. I do like this palette. I wish it was like removable pans so I could use these colors in like indie palettes, but I do like that it's like unique to my collection. I have this Ofra palette. I don't like it. I, did I, I think I bought this in an Ipsy sale like a year or two ago and I didn't have a positive opinion of Ofra when I bought it, but it was like really inexpensive and I was like, let me try it out. And right after I got it, I like, I regretted doing it. I was like, why did I spend any money <laughs> on something that I didn't like? So this has just been kind of sitting around for a while. You could probably guess what direction that will go in. This Tarte Unleashed palette, I think this is all depotted. Oh, I still have some shadows in here. That's kind of funny. I know I took out some mattes that I really liked, and I guess these are the ones that I don't really like. The Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. I think this is all, yeah, that's all depotted. This palette from Natasha Denona. This is like a nude palette. I got this a couple years ago because on Sephora it said it was vegan, but I have some doubts now about if it is vegan or if like they just marked it that way or if they changed the ingredients after I bought it and this one's vegan and other ones aren't. I don't know. Either way, not a big fan of this. I do feel, like, jealous sometimes of, the, like, the relationship people have with Natasha Denona. Like, I kind of wish I had, like, a cool <laughs> mainstream brand that I loved and had interchangeable pans and was vegan, but Natasha Denona isn't vegan, and I don't even know if I would connect with the shadows that much anyway. If they're anything like this, I just feel like I wouldn't be very excited because I'm not very excited about this. Second to last palette is the Simply Posh Northern Lights palette. I talked about this earlier this year because it was stinky. And you know, it still is up close, but it has gone away from a distance. I don't tend to reach in for this either way, though. It was like a pretty negative first impression, considering it was stinky. And also, I mentioned this in that video where I was being kind of petty, but the front of this is like so matte, and I wish it just had this like shine that the back of it had. 
it just like really cheapens it for me and I'm I'm not a big fan. And then the last palette is the Druid palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. And this palette I really like. This is a palette that I know I'll use way more once I have a smaller collection. I made several looks with this when I first got it that I really loved. I love the shade Balance. I love the shade Transformation. I even like the mattes, the color selection of the mattes, the formula of the mattes. My only regret is that I know that if you buy this now, it's magnetic, it's like removable, but this one at the time wasn't. Not the biggest deal, but I, I do really like this palette and I hope to use it more. That was all my palettes. I have no idea how long I've been talking for, <laughs> but um, let's switch back over to my face and hear some final thoughts. And that was my entire eyeshadow palette collection. As I'm saying entire, I am realizing I have some nostalgic palettes that are put to the side that I will be talking about and decluttering later in the year. So this was my entire eyeshadow palette collection that's like in use or, or could be in use or hasn't been deemed too old to be in use. But yeah, as I said before, it feels really out of hand. I wanted to do a big declutter last year and I remember I was kind of like leading up to it. I thought it would be one of my December 2022 videos and then when it got to be December 2022, I felt like I wanted to make more content with palettes that I already had before I decluttered them. And now it's just been like years of my collection being out of control. But I'm so excited to do this video because I feel like now the ball's rolling to me getting my collection under control. So if there's any specific videos about any of the palettes I have that you want to see, let me know because I think that no matter what, I'm going to be giving myself like a cutoff point of December. And if there's a palette I hope to make content around but I didn't get to, like that's it. Like I, <laughs> I can't do another year of holding on to like old Jeffree Star palettes that don't make me happy in any way to look at and in fact do the opposite. Yeah, that is everything. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. You'll subscribe, stick around for more palette content maybe some duping out these palettes with singles, comparisons, that kind of thing. The singles always win, so it's always fun to do and convince myself that I need to keep even less palettes. And I think that'll make the eventual declutter even more successful. So that's cool. But either way, thank you so much for being here. Bye.